So now that we have our default unlit shader, let's take a look at the kind of basic anatomy of what's in there. So I'm gonna double click on our hologram shader and let's take a look at some code. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this, this'll be a little bit different from the way we usually do it because normally I start with an empty script and type everything out, but because the default shader actually has a lot of stuff in it that I wanna explain, I'm gonna do a top level explanation of what each of these kind of blocks and parts of this are. We're gonna talk a little bit more specifically about how this type of shader works, uh, and then we'll get in and go kind of line by line through the code. At a top level, we have a new file that is a shader, right? It's been created in this unlit folder and has the name hologram. We could add it to a different menu folder if we wanted to, call it special effects, cool hologram. Uh, and then if we save that, that will then be reflected in the editor here, right, we can see unlit special effects, cool hologram. We did not have to change the name of the shader file, right? We can change the string here to as to where it's found without actually changing the name of the file. The language that this is written in is called Shader Lab, and it's kind of interesting because it's a mix of two different languages, actually. So we have this kind of high level um, shader lab syntax, which is mostly about telling Unity how we're going to render things. And then down here, we have our CG program and NCG block, which is the actual CG, short for C for graphics code, that is going to be run on the GPU, right? So we have up here, a properties block. This allows us to define what are effectively public variables in Unity. So right now we just have one, which is the main texture. Um, we have a string where we can, like the string up here, we can change this to texture map if we want to, or let's call it, um, let's call this maybe albedo texture, right? Since it's the main color. The type is 2D texture and the default is white, right? Which we saw when we first created it. Note, no semicolon to end this line. This is something I'll probably make a mistake with as I'm typing, because I just have such a habit of putting semicolons at the ends of lines. But in the properties declarations, there are no semicolons to end the line. Um, but so if we save that, we can see that the, now we've changed the name here to albedo texture, but the name of the actual variable here uh, is different, right? So we can have a kind of a display name and then the name of the uh, variable as it's gonna be used in the code. So then here we have the sub, sh the sub shader block. The sub shader block is the actual code that contains sort of instructions for Unity about how to set up the renderer and then contains uh, the pass, right, which is, uh, you may have heard the term set pass call or draw call, right? This is like a single instruction to the GPU to say, hey, draw this, right? Now, you may see in some shaders, multiple sub shaders. We could have, so this starts here and ends here, right? So we only have one sub shader in this file, but we could have, let's say, one shader for our, the PS4 build of our game and one shader for the mobile build or the VR build, the kind of more performance optimized version, right? And we could have those in the same file um, and use the appropriate type for the appropriate uh, platform, for example. So here we have some tags, which are gonna tell, talk to the Unity renderer and kind of explain how we want this to be rendered. And we'll, we'll talk about those uh, in more detail later on. We have the uh, level of detail, right? We can set a level of detail um, and change how the shader behaves based on the level of detail. Uh, and then we have the pass with the actual CG program code in it. Now, I'm just gonna draw your attention to the kind of high level stuff here. We have two structs, which are data objects, which we're gonna pass to two functions. And these are kind of the real meat and potatoes here. The first, is what's called the vertex function, um, which is called vert. The second is what's called the fragment function called frag, right? And we're gonna go through 
all of the lines starting all the way up at the top, but I want to just give the top level view uh, as I then go into my slide here. So this is a graph of what's happening in an unlit shader. We have the vertex function, which is executed first and takes the shape of the model and potentially modifies it, right? So we start out with a mesh, that's the blue box, right? That's our, our asset, our 3D model. And then we pass it in to the vertex function. And this basically gets all the vertices of the model ready to be rendered. Uh, it decides how they're going to be positioned in relation to the world and to the camera, right? So it converts from object space to what we call clip space relative to the camera. And then once that is ready, and, and potentially one of the things that we're gonna see today is that you can actually modify the positions of the vertices in the vertex function before uh, they're rendered. So that kind of glitch effect that we saw where the vertices are moving, we're actually doing that in the vertex function of our custom shader. So we're gonna see that. And then we pass the result of that in one of the structs that I pointed out to the fragment function. So the fragment function basically takes the data from the vertex function and paints in the pixels, right? Decides, okay, based on this is where I'm going to need to draw data, what color pixels am I going to render here, right? Both of these can draw in data from our public properties, right? So in this case, with this, the shader as it currently stands, it's going to be drawing in property data about the texture that's assigned in the inspector, right? And saying, okay, at this point in the model, uh, what is the corresponding pixel in this texture that needs to be drawn here? Uh, and then once it's completed that, it's then going to output to a render target, which in this case is just going to be rendering to the screen so that we can display our object. And somebody's asking about the extra set of braces after the property. Those are actually sort of useless leftover braces, as I understand it. I'm pretty sure those used to be used when um, you used to use fixed function shaders in Unity, and now they're no longer needed, but are still left there because the compiler expects them. They may go away at some point in the future, according to the documentation, but for now, they're just a kind of a, a, a remnant. LOD is level of detail. So you may have heard of LODs for 3D models, right? You might have a high detail 3D model for when the player is close and a low detail one for when the player is far, far away. You can uh, do the same kind of calculations uh, in shaders. Rudd156 asks, is it possible to do something like change a cube into something else in the vertex function? Yeah. Yeah. That's, you can move around the vertices in an arbitrary way. We're going to apply this kind of wavy sine wave effect to it. Um, but you could do whatever you could, whatever you could think to write in there. Very top level, uh, fairly simple explanation of what's going on, but hopefully that will serve as a useful uh, entry point for as we start to dig into this shader in more detail. So the next thing that we're going to look into is we're going to go line by line through the shader and we're going to look at the vertex function first.